Good morning. I think everyone's about in here. We have a few maybe that aren't <coughs> settled in yet. <coughs> I wanted to talk to you this morning about the vine and the branches from John 15. Of course, Jesus being the vine, uh, the Father is the gardener, and we are the branches as the believers. In verse 2, he tells us that the gardener does two things. He cuts off every branch that bears no fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. Pruning includes um, cutting away the dead part, of course, which is a pretty obvious reason why we do that. But also, sometimes it's cut back, even the live wood is cut back, which will prevent disease, cause the growth to increase and uh, the fruit to improve. And this is, you know, when compared to our lives, can be very painful at times. But if we, you know, realize the end result, then we'll know why the Lord is doing this. I want to read that verse from the Amplified Version, that verse 2. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit or stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. I thought that was really good translation. This gives us a good understanding of what Christ is doing when we are disciplined and works in our hearts. So we, when we come to expect that and recognize that, it's, it, we're far ahead rather than, you know, when we don't know what's going on. To recognize this goal that he has for us will give us a good attitude toward this correction when it comes. After the trimming away or cutting away is done and then the cleansing comes, Jesus stresses this in verse 4, <clears throat> to abide in him. Uh, abide in me, he says, and I in you as, I'm sorry, it's the branch, as the branch, bears fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you, unless you abide in me. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the key <clears throat> that he tells us here. And just like Brother Tony did, I'm going to compare it to the storm that we had here. As you know, there are branches all over town, down, and uh, you don't see anyone going out there, gathering those up, and trying to put them back on the tree, do you? They don't see that, of course, because everybody knows that's not going to work. Plus, they know what's going to happen to those branches. They're not going to grow again, leave them lay there. They're not going to grow even if they plant them. And so they know just to do away with them, they're going to be they're going to be dead because they have been separated from the source of their nourishment and their, their lives. Um, and so in verse 6, it says, If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away, withers and withers. Such branches are... Uh, picked up and thrown into the fire. So that's what they're going to do with them, of course. And it's the same thing that will happen to us if we don't stay or remain in the vine with Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus stated to abide in him numerous times in this text in different ways over and over again. This is of great importance and key to what he is teaching us here. So or he wouldn't have said it this many times. When you remain in him, there are many benefits, and I'm going to point out, and I'm not going to read all these verses. You can go home and read it if you'd like uh, from John 15. Verses 7 through uh, 16 mentions several different things that are benefits to us if we remain in him, <clears throat> which, remember, will not be ours if we don't remain in him. <laughs> Verse 7 talks about our prayers or requests will be granted if we remain in him. Verse 8, you will glorify the Father by bearing much fruit. Uh -huh. Verses 9 and 10 you will remain in God's love. A good place to be, for sure. Yeah. Verse 11, your joy will be full and overflowing. Yeah. Verse 14, Jesus will regard you as his friends. Yeah. Verse 16, Jesus has chosen you. So it's good to know that, too. Yeah. Uh, so all these verses uh, talk about the blessings that we have if we abide in him. So it's uh, a, uh, a real uh, plus, of course, and an incentive to stay in the vine. So we'll go ahead and continue with our singing with Sister Tasha now.